Hey guys, before the video begins, I just want to ask if you could please rate and comment on the video. Especially if you're one of the first thousand to watch it or see it within the first 24 hours of release. As this has a colossal impact on my whole channel. Thanks guys, you really are awesome. Number 1 When I was 15, I went on a cruise with my parents around Asia. One night, I was making my way back to the kids club as my mother insisted that I join it to meet new people. After changing into my swimsuit at the cabin, it was around midnight and since 90% of the people on the ship were elderly, they were already in bed, so everywhere I went was empty. My cabin was on the lowest level of the ship, whereas the pool was on the top deck, so I had a fair way to get there. After waiting for one of the six elevators to open for about five minutes, I got impatient and ran for the stairs. That's when I heard someone behind me. Are you running away from me? I turned around and saw a man, who looked to be in his late twenties and dressed from head to toe in grey. He was grinning directly at me. Unsure of how to act, I gave him a slight smile and tried to keep on walking, but he moved quickly and blocked my path. He then began to bombard me with questions. What's your name? How old are you? Where are you from? Why are you so uncomfortable around me? But I managed to lie and said that my parents were waiting for me, and before he answered, I walked away and ran when I couldn't see him. Around about two, I said goodbye to my new friends and started to head towards the stairs again. And guess who I ran into? The man was coming up the stairs when I was about to go down. As soon as he spotted me, he grinned. He was purposefully blocking my way and his questions were getting more and more personal. He kept telling me that I had a pretty smile and that I was beautiful, and he offered to walk me to my cabin. At this point, obviously, my gut was telling me to get away fast. That was the second time I ran into him, and it was on the same floor. I began to think that his cabin was on that floor, and was worrying what he would do. Every time he said something, I replied with, I have to go, and eventually I could see this was making him angry. This went on for several minutes. More questions, more compliments, and some touching. I pushed him off though. He then hit the wall beside us when I wasn't giving him the answers I wanted. But then he took a deep breath and smiled at me. I was beginning to get really scared. So I turned around and ran through the glass doors behind me to the pool deck and collided with one of the boys from the club. I began to panic, convinced he was coming after me. I was talking way too fast and hyperventilating, and my friend had no idea what I was talking about. I turned around to point to the man, but he was no longer there. I told my parents about what happened. My mother was determined to find out who he was, and so she went to the little photo shop on one of the decks and looked through the mandatory photos that each passenger had taken before they got on the ship. He wasn't in a single photo. I never saw him again after that. It was as if he was never even on the boat. Number 2 When I was around 10 years old, my family took a trip to Egypt. It was a sorta half cruise down the Nile. We would stay often in various spots to check out things, and I don't think we honestly actually traveled on the boat very far. It's where our rooms were though. My memory is a bit shaky on the finer points, as it was almost 20 years ago. But I do remember lots of the cool things we went to see and do. The Great Pyramids, riding a camel, museums, mummies, etc. But I also remember a lot of not-so-fun things. Like the tour guide telling my family that my mother and I could never be by ourselves without either our male family members or others from the tour group. 
They told us that the men in the country would see a single woman as someone seeking sex, as they wouldn't travel alone otherwise. Or the man offering my father a herd of camels for me, and a bit less for my mother, as she was older. On the top of the ship we were staying at there was a swimming pool. One morning as I was using it, sporting a one-piece bathing suit, there was a boat driving past where we were moored, full of men. They were hooting and hollering, applauding, and making a general ruckus as they could see me. And I put on theatrics because of it, diving into the pool, strutting around, loving the attention. I cringe at this now. Years later, my mother told me how in a store, selling souvenirs on shore, she was groped by the seller. He was placing a necklace on her and gave one of her breasts a really invasive feel. She told my father and he shrugged it off at the time, and she was still mad at him over it. I understand. I would too. Good job, Dad. Not. And to this day I remember the one morning my parents went to go watch the sunrise over the desert. It required a very early wake-up, and my brother and I declined to go. So while my parents were out in the desert looking at the sun, my brother still sleeping, I decided to go to the pool. This may have been the same day that I was catcalled, since I was at the pool area by myself, but I'm not 100% sure. I do remember that on the top of the ship, there was a hatch going down one level near the pool. That day I eyed it and decided I had to know where it went. It was easy to open, and I climbed down a short ladder to the deck below. This deck was still open to the outside, with doors leading to compartments and such. The way the boat was moored, we were a couple of ships out from the port. To get off the boat, you'd have to traverse the other ships in between, but I think this was a normal thing. They were all lined up together, and the travelers would simply disembark by going through the various ships until reaching shore. I went right when I reached the ladder bottom. Noticing the major differences from the other areas of the boat I had been on, this area was dirtier and there were ropes and other junk lying around. I found where the kitchens were and I stood a while looking through the window. I remember it seemingly rather gross looking in there, which redoubled my desire to never eat there. My family had already decided to not eat on the boat when a waiter visibly sweated into the soups he served us. I went back towards where the ladder was, then continued a bit to the left. From this vantage, I could see all the ships between ours and shore. I think there were around three to four in total. I noticed on the far ship that a man was hopping over the railings and coming towards me, one boat at a time. This is verse coming through the main area which had been set up for the tourists to easily get through all the ships to get to shore. I backed up a bit, back towards the ladder as I realized he was making a beeline toward me. He came over the railing and I don't remember what exactly he said to me, but it was an introduction in heavily accented English. He asked me if I wanted to party. I was a little confused. In my head, Party is when my parents had friends over and lots of music and dancing. I liked parties. Sometimes I got to stay up late and dance too. I don't remember exactly how he convinced me, but I remember standing in the open doorway to the cabin where he was inviting me in. It smelled like smoke and there was a haze all throughout the room. Three men in the traditional garb, I don't know what it's called, the long flowing dress like shirts that they wear with the headgear as well, were sitting and smiling at me, waving their hands at me, a hookah nearby them, bottles everywhere. Outside the room the sun was shining and everything was bright and lit up, and there was an underlying smell I couldn't place, smoke drifting, and the blinds were all shut, giving the room a reddish tinge. Out of everything, that memory is the most vivid. I remember looking up at the smiling mustached man standing in the doorway. He wasn't intimidating, a bit scrawny. He had a good smile that didn't seem off. My little prepubescent brain didn't light up though. It went, I'm pretty sure this is one of those situations that I'm not supposed to be in and I really need to go right the heck now. So I booked it. I turned tail skedaddled to the ladder. It wasn't that far. 
I didn't look back a single time, just got up the ladder as fast as I could and ran back to our room. My brother was in, where he was still sleeping. I told my parents after they returned. They made a complaint, but nothing ever came of it. The room in question was just a crew member's lounge or something. I never saw any of those guys again. My parents left Egypt disgruntled. I never really thought about it again until a few years later when I was older. Would I be dead by now? Sold into a sex ring? Married to some Egyptian guy with a bunch of kids by now? It makes me shudder to even think about it, and very grateful that my school did cover a little, not enough, about stranger danger. It was enough to make me reject the very friendly guy and realize this was a bad situation for me to be in. With all the weird situations that happened on that trip, and the fascination I apparently held for being so young, I can't help but think that something terrible would have happened if I had gone into that room. Skeeves me out to this day. Number 3 About 8 years ago, when I was 10, my dad and now ex stepmom got into another knockdown drag out fight. So in order to get away for a few days, my dad loaded me and my sister into his truck and took us down a few hours south to see my uncle. We tried to make the most of our time there. And on our last day, my dad took my sister and I to an old battleship that had been turned into a tourist destination. It was just out on the water and it was lovely. And about an hour after walking around the ship, we met up with this random old man. He was dressed in an old raggedy t-shirt and some baggy shorts. He strikes up a conversation with my father out of nowhere. My dad is a pretty sociable person and didn't think much of it, neither did we. The dirty and scraggy old man seemed nice enough after all, but then he seemed to appear everywhere we went. We made our way to the highest deck of the ship to the control room. My dad and sister were standing outside on the deck whilst I was staring at the window of the control room. As I turned to leave, I saw the man standing behind me. His junk, hanging, out the front of his shorts, just staring at me. Of course, I was terrified. I hightailed it out of the control room and found my dad immediately. I couldn't seem to find a moment alone to tell him of what just happened, since the man was still following us. He followed us out the ship as we headed towards the old submarines. At that point, the man was stopped by some security guards. I waited until we were a considerable distance away from him before I told my dad. And of course, he was livid. He turned around initially intending to find the man and beat the shit out of him. But instead, he found an employee. He stated his complaint and the employee just sighed and nodded. She said that they had had several complaints around the ship stating that the same man had been exposing himself to others on the ship as well, and that the police had been informed. I've never gone back to that ship. I don't think I could even if I wanted to. It still gives me the creeps when we drive by it on our way to my uncle's. Number 4 My grandparents decided to take the whole family on a cruise at Christmas time around the Caribbean. There were 14 of us, so we were all located in different cabins spread over different floors. I'm a female, so my sister and myself shared a room. I was 16 and my sister was 14. On our first night, we could hardly sleep as the couple in the adjoining cabin were having a very loud argument. The man kept calling the girl a whore and shouted that she was only there because of his money. It went on until the early hours of the morning. After that night, all was quiet, and I assumed that the girl had moved to another cabin, as I never seen or heard her again. The next day we were up early for breakfast. I was keen to explore the ship, and my sister was taking a while to get ready. I thought if I waited in the corridor that I would encourage her to hurry up. While I was waiting in the corridor, I heard the next door opening, and I couldn't help but look to see who the man was that had been doing all of the shouting. 
He looked at me and his eyes lit up straight away. This horrible feeling came over me. The feeling I now know is gut instinct. I just knew from the way that he looked at me that he was bad news. He looked to be in his 40s and looked normal, but I couldn't stop the shivers traveling up my spine. He said hello, but all I could manage was a faint smile. I decided I'd head back into the room as I was chapping on the door. The man was walking down the corridor to the elevators, but repeatedly looked back to look at me. From that point on, he seemed to be everywhere. In the dining room at lunch, he would sit close by. At the pool, he would only be a few loungers along. A couple of times I got in elevators only to have him run in behind me, even though I hadn't seen him around before I entered the lift. Luckily, even though I wasn't with my family, there had always been other people in the lift when he ran in. All he did was stand and stare at me and I would get shivers down my back. The first couple of days I tried to ignore it. I had always gotten attention from boys. I tried to just brush it off as a bit of attention but something didn't seem right. Especially since the ship we were on was massive and there was so many people on board. I started to find it hard to believe that he would just randomly bump into me. We had told my mom and dad and the others about the argument in the other room from the first night, but I couldn't bring myself to say anything about the man following me. I felt embarrassed. Silly, I know. Near the end of the week, I wanted to leave the pool and get changed to go watch a movie with my cousins. My sister wanted to stay at the pool so I headed to the room by myself. When I got in the elevator with another few people, I noticed the man sneak in at the end and all I could feel was dread as he stared at me. The other people on the lift got off at our stop, but went in another direction. As I walked down the corridor to my room, I could feel the man's eyes on the back of my neck. I quickly sped up and hurried into my room. A minute passed, and there was a knock at my door. Immediately, I knew it was him. There had been no one else in the corridor. The knocks continued as I panicked on what I should do. I thought I would have to answer the door because he had watched me enter and knew I was there. I answered the door, and the man had the creepiest smile on his face. Hey, sweet thing, I'm locked out of my room. Can I come in to use your phone? I knew he was lying. So quickly I thought of something to get out of the situation. Sorry, our phone isn't working, I said as I tried to shut the door. Oh, fuck, you're Scottish. He asked in a surprised voice. I mumbled something in agreement, shutting the door, but he stuck his foot in. I decided to use all my strength and batter the door against his foot. He cried out in pain, but put his other foot in place. Hey, I just need to come in for a minute. He kept shouting at me. I told him he should just go to reception and continued to try to shut the door. The panic was flooding through me. The next minute I heard someone say, Jess, what's going on? With relief, I realized it was my older male cousin, Jonathan, coming by so we could go watch the film. Who are you? Jonathan shouted at the man. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you were Scottish. I thought I knew your friend from back in the US. The guy mumbled. It's just a misunderstanding. He hopped away and proceeded to enter his room. We left the next morning and I didn't see him again. I will never forget that creepy expression he had on his face every time he looked at me. It makes me sick to my stomach. Number 5 This happened on a trip sanctioned by my former high school. We went to Russia and had a wonderful time in Moscow at St. Petersburg. The travel agency proposed something, an extension for us to go to Tallinn, Estonia, and Helsinki, Finland. Being school kids out of the United States, and some of us for the first time, of course we took it. And we took the uneventful bus trip to Estonia, and then a ship across the Baltic Sea into Finland. The trip leader decided that we had been pretty damn responsible for the past week, and told us that we could sit slash eat wherever we wanted to, and told us where to find him. We had lunch on the ship, and that's when things turned creepy. A group of girls had claimed a table to themselves, and were just chatting and eating. Then a man came up to them and started talking to them in Russian. 
They apologised and said that they could only speak English, and he left. Then he came back a few minutes later, and sat at the table right next to them. After a few minutes of having him stare at them, they moved to a different table in a different part of the ship. Unfortunately, a few minutes later, the very same man appeared and sat right next to them again. Then one of them saw him take out a camera and started taking a few pictures of the girls. Having enough at this point, the group of three sets off to find their parents or the teacher, because this is a school trip, remember. They hit the jackpot when most of the teachers and a few parents are sitting together and told them what was happening. The trip leader went off to find some employees on the ship to help us out and the rest of the girls went to the adults table. After that, the man left. The girls all felt better but stuck with the adults just to be safe. Then one girl, Mary, went into the restroom. She knew another person was already in there but felt safe enough to go in on her own. But unfortunately, on her way there, she saw the same creepy man from before. She hurried past. Outside the ladies' room, she turned back, and he was waiting for her at the end of the hall. So she went into the bathroom and began hyperventilating, having nowhere to go. What she didn't know is that one of the dads followed her, just to be on the safe side, and saw her being followed. He brushed right past that creepy man and stood there guard at the bathroom door, being sure to give the man a proper glare. The man then walked off in a hurry, before he got any other ideas. Once he was gone, the dad knocked on the bathroom door and told Mary that he would wait for her outside and it was safe to come out. The trip leader found someone who spoke English and told them what had happened, and they said that they would keep a lookout for the man and made sure that he got stopped if he caught leaving the ship. No one saw him again, so I assumed that he was caught somewhere, or else he snuck off with pictures of underaged girls. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. Merry Creepmas everyone. Please remember to leave a like and I'd love to know the types of stories that you'd like me to focus on next. You have the power, so comment away and hopefully you'll see your suggestion as a video very soon. And why not subscribe whilst you're at it? Because you won't want to miss what's next. You can find part two of this collaboration on screen now. I narrated an extremely scary story over on Being Scared's channel about a guy and his roommate, so please head on over and listen to it. It's the best story of the lot. So honestly, check it out. Link on screen now and in description. You won't regret it. Finally, don't forget you can see more of me on Twitter and Instagram. But for now guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.